Twas the Night Before Tudor Christmas by Laura Loney, illustrated by Catherine Holman. Twas the night before Christmas in a palace so grand, not a courtier was scheming by royal command. The kissing bough was hung from the ceiling with love, unspoken promises of joy from above. The tutors were warm in their lice-ridden beds, while visions of sugared nuts swirled in their heads. And Henry in his nightshirt, and Anne in her gown, quarreled over airs and fell asleep wearing frowns. When in the great hall there arose such a crash, Anne jumped out of the four-poster bed in a flash. Toward the hall she moved in an elegant prance, flung open the doors, scowled, but then started to dance. For what sight did her stunning dark eyes behold? But a room set for a feast, sparkling with gold. The fire was alight and roaring with heat. After fasting for weeks, she could smell roasting meat. With a look and a grin so lively and quick, Anne knew as queen she'd have the best pick. More festive than peacocks, the courses would come, and Anne planned to praise them all, not just some. Now plum pottage, now boar's head, now deer and small game. More tarts, more citrus, more everything, she'd exclaim. The food on your trenchers and all the pies in the hall. Now devour, devour, devour it all. As exciting as a joust with knights so brave, the smells forecasted a meal all nobles would crave. Anne longed for a taste of a sweet, scrumptious food. Some rose-scented march pain would secure her good mood. But then, loud and booming, Anne heard on the stairs Henry moaning about his lack of male heirs. As she turned round her head, that was still safe and sound, the Lord of Misrule crept into the hall with a bound. He was dressed very merry in colorful clothes, adorned with bells on his legs over his hose. He had cards in his hands and games on his mind. They started to giggle when he shook his behind. Both their moods now improved with promise of cheer. They recalled why they held each other so dear. Henry called out, Wassail! Though t'was not yet quite day, and the Lord of Misrule bravely shooed him away. It's not yet Christmas, he teased. You cannot partake. The Tudor King began to turn red, frown, and shake. How dare you, Henry snarled from deep in his belly. His jowls rumbled, quaked, and looked strangely like jelly. As the Lord of Misrule became notably pale, Anne smiled, then gracefully laughed at both males. A wink in her eye and a touch on his arm, Anne calmed the king so he would not cause the man harm. She spoke not a word, but her gaze softened his heart. Then gently she said, Henry, he's playing his part. The Lord of Misrule is fun, unruly and sly. Yes, of course, said the king as he grinned in reply. We shall wait till it's day to make merry and feast. The Lord of Misrule dashed away, now released. Then Queen Anne turned to Henry, a dazzling sight. Happy Christmas, my king, and to all a good night. I hope you have enjoyed this illustrated storybook retelling of the classic Christmas poem, The Night Before Christmas. Within the pages of the book, Twas the Night Before Tudor Christmas, you will find not only this storybook, but also more than 30 activities and recipes to bring a touch of Tudor history to a modern Christmas. There are 15 recipes, both savory and sweet, a look and find, crafts, jokes, riddles, games, a several page overview of the Tudor dynasty, and even a beautifully illustrated family tree. This family-friendly book is written in a light-hearted tone and created to be a compendium and Christmas keepsake. Additional historical tidbits in every section also help explain the Tudor connections. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays!